we are on board our Mary Fisher 895 Series 1 and we were thinking Janose released the 695 Series 2 they released the 795 Series 2 so we're guessing what's next the 895 Series 2 so in this video we're going to bring to you a few little things that we think that they might upgrade or possibly could have a think about um, so yeah in no particular order let's go Welcome back to the Rudder. My name is Damien, this is Brooke, and welcome on board our Genoa Mary Fisher 895 Antoinette. Now, you can probably tell we love Antoinette, all the videos we've done here, all of our travels, but just in that time, we've just found a few things that we think if they were going to release a Series 2, there'll be some upgrades, obviously. So here are just some things that we think uh, could just do with a little bit of a tune-up. So yeah, we've come up with 10 things. You might think we're being very picky, which we, we really do need to be picky to find 10 things that we, can, hard. that we can that could be upgraded. So let's go down below and we'll get started. Into the helm position, probably one of the most important positions to uh, navigate your boat. And the first one is these rocker switches down here, notice by my knee, and that's an, the anchor uh, up and down switch there. So it, it'd be super easy to hit that rocker switch with your knee whilst underway banged into a few of these occasionally, luckily not the anchor one. I know you've got the safety on the anchor, but if you you hit it downwards to bring the anchor up, you're actually straining the windlass, which wouldn't be very good. It's such an easy fix, you could either cover them up or just have a steel bar across here that would stop your knee bashing into them. The next one is the captain's chair. In the original version, it just has a, a slide backwards and forwards. I've upgraded this one to add a swivel. So you've got a swivel here, the captain can join the party if there's a few people at the dinette. The thing is, we know Janot has these chairs because this is what they put in the sports series. So I reckon on the series two, add the swivel. Modification number three. Now this is interesting. This is the only modification that we would recommend from here down. We don't have any recommendations for the mid cab or the bow cab. So as you know, you've nailed it. The only thing is these steps, they are so ridiculously sharp. We know they have to be as steep as they are, but they're so sharp on the edges. Let me show you. It's just right on these edges here. It just gets so sharp, especially if you slip on it, it can be really um, painful. I've actually gone up the back of my leg once. So yeah, so that's modification number three. Let's head up into the galley for modification number five. And yes, okay, again, we're being really picky, but it has to do with this here. So when we're at anchor, obviously lift this up to cook. Sometimes we leave it up and walk away and if a little bit of swell comes through, if a boat goes past, we've found that this can fall down. And if you've got a saucepan or a kettle or anything here, I don't know whether you can put a latch here to tighten it, but maybe you know could consider doing some sort of fastener. So when it's up, you can latch it so it stays up and it's secure. So that is number four. Yeah, we're being picky, but just these finer things that can bring it just to that higher level. Number five, let me just shut this. Again, it is picky, and I know some owners of the 895 have removed this, and yeah, it's a French boat, so what do you expect? But really, we don't love these wine racks in here. It takes up so much room, A. B, we find that these are always falling over. So I know a lot of owners have removed this in the past, but maybe this is number five, you know, we don't really need these racks in here for the next series. Um, so yeah, maybe they could consider removing this rack. Let's head outside and see what Damien's got for modification number six. Stepping outside into the cockpit, the next one is fuel. More specifically, the filling points. So on the starboard side, it's just here, uh, which isn't too bad when you've pulled up at the marina on your starboard side with the tuna door here, you can fill that one up. To fill up the port side, you've got to drag that pipe across your teak table, across your furniture, and somehow get up over here and wriggle in and fill up on the port side here. Really difficult to do. And the other thing is, 
which these obviously vent a little bit. That's the, that's the way the caps work. When you're sitting here, you do get to get a bit of a smell of petrol every now and then, which isn't very pleasant. Also on the fuel is, I'm not really sure why we have to have fuel, two filler points. I know there's two fuel tanks. Um, I know the reasoning you have that is if you've got bad fuel in one side, hopefully the fuel in the other side is all good. Every time I fill up, I'm filling up both sides. So if I get bad fuel from the marina, I'm going to get bad fuel in both tanks uh, before I know that I've got bad fuel. Personally, I'd love to just have one filler, maybe put it out the back, and that fills both tanks. Staying out the back is these cleats. There's one on either side. Because they're up on the top rail here, any rope that goes over them actually rubs on the side there and you cannot get these ropes tight just because it bends over the hull to get down to the marina. On some of the newer versions, they put the cleat on the back here, which means you can tie off directly to the marina without the hull getting in the way. I know these are all small little things, but just those little touches will make the Series 2 awesome. We've moved back inside for number eight and nine now, and eight and nine is all about airflow. When you're on the water, typically you're on the water in summer, so you need lots of airflow. So the first one is um, these sunroofs, they're brilliant, but they don't really let much air in when you're underway. So yeah, they do, you can clip them up like that, but we were thinking maybe that you could actually um, jimmy something up so you can lift them more and so more airflow could come in. Now, that was until we saw the 795 Series 2 and they, you know, are listening, you know, are really listening. In the 795 Series 2, they've got two little air vents here that push air into the cabin when underway and you can tilt them just like in a car. So that's a great one. Number nine, it's got to do with airflow in the bow cabin. You can see the hatch is lifted up. Again, if they could have something where you could just tilt it slightly, it would scoop the air up and allow it to go into the cabin when you're at anchor. So number eight and nine is all about air, air in the cabin and air in the bow cabin. Lucky last is the batteries, more specifically the way they've wired up the batteries. So you've got a starter battery, which as its name rightly says is to start the engines. And you've got a house battery, and some boats have two of those. So in my head, the starter battery should be starting the motor. But the way they've wired it is the starter battery starts one motor, and the house battery starts the other side. So you can see when you turn this on, you've got the two lights saying that you've got power there. And when you isolate the batteries, you'll see the power goes off. So it's each battery is isolating. What that means is that the house battery is cranking one of your motors. And my house battery is not designed as a cranking battery. It's designed to let amp hours out really slowly. You can get around it. Uh, so in the back there, you can link the batteries together and so we've got one massive battery. So when I'm at anchor, I isolate the starter battery. Just in case anything happens, I want that starter battery to be ready to go when I want the internet to move. But once we've been at anchor for a while, that house battery is run down a little bit. The way they've got it wired, it's trying to start one of the motors. The way I'd solve this is just make sure that your starter battery is the one that starts both engines and you just need to make sure it's isolated and ready to go and nice and fresh for when you want to get out on the water. So that's 10 things that they could improve or refine on the 895 Series 2. We love this boat. It's not being critical, but just a few things that you know could fine tune. If you've got any other ideas, if you've got an 895, chuck them in the comments down below and uh, we'll make sure Jano gets them. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully they're watching. And um, we will see you next time on the rudder. Happy boating.